His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa met today at Gudabia Palace with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty congratulated the Prime Minister for receiving the Communication Technology and Sustainable Development Award by the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, lauding his role in achieving sustainable development goals on the local and international levels. His Majesty also lauded the achievements of the government and the leadership of the Prime Minister in the field of information and communication technology and its use of modern technology to serve sustainable development plans and strategies in all sectors of Bahrain to achieve further progress and prosperity in Bahrain. His Majesty then discussed with His Royal Highness the current situation in Yemen and the role of the Saudi-led Arab coalition to restore legitimacy and stability there. His Majesty the King also received at Gudaybiya Palace today in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, the British Secretary of State for Defence, Michael Fallon. His Majesty reviewed with the official the relations of friendship and cooperation, praising the outstanding coordination in the fields of military and defence. He confirmed keenness to continue developing bilateral relations to serve the best interests of both kingdoms and peoples. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain is a model for tolerance and coexistence among different religions and sects. He stressed Bahrain's support to regional and international efforts to preserve security, stability and peace, hailing the UK's contributions in reinforcing regional security and stability and serving issues of global peace. And for his part, the British official thanked His Majesty for his keenness to continue reinforcing cooperation between the two countries. He confirmed his country's commitment towards Bahrain in all fields, highlighting their historic relations. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qudaybiyah Palestinian state officials who congratulated him for receiving the Communication Technology and Sustainable Development Award by the International Telecommunication Union. And they said that this award reflects His Royal Highness' efforts in achieving sustainable development. The Prime Minister affirmed the continuous march towards progress and development of Bahrain, stressing that Bahrain's leading position should be expanded to cover more areas, affirming that the Kingdom continues to have precedent in many fields according to global indicators. He discussed topics regarding the regional and international affairs, affirming the importance of unified stances to solve regional challenges and confirmed that the GCC countries always seek to maintain stability, stressing that Saudi Arabia is the strategic depth in the Arab world, loading their role and efforts in serving the Arab nation.
The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received at his office the British Secretary of State for Defense and his delegation. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa commended the outstanding relations of friendship between Bahrain and the UK, highlighting the existing joint cooperation, especially in the field of military. The meeting also discussed issues of common concern. The Foreign Minister, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the greetings and good wishes of His Majesty the King to U.S. President Barack Obama, wishing the American people further progress. The minister attended the reception hosted by President Obama to world leaders and heads of states participating in the UN General Assembly's 70th session. He expressed Bahrain's pride in the increasingly growing bilateral ties, citing the shared keenness on widening the strategic cooperation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also exchanged congratulatory cables with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov, on the 25th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries. They affirmed their keenness to strengthen relations and reinforce cooperation and coordination on all regional and global issues to avail the two friendly countries and peoples. They pointed out that the establishment of diplomatic ties signaled a new phase of great importance in developing bilateral relations as it added more dynamism to relations diversified them and pushed them towards comprehensive cooperation at all levels. They expressed delight over the constantly progressing ties, an indication of the ongoing endeavors to remove obstacles, affirming that further interaction and development of relations would achieve common interests, reinforce security and stability and boost cooperation efforts in the region. This is Bahrain exhibition and conference opened at the New York Hilton uh, Midtown yesterday, the second to be held as part of a tour to the U.S. The event included several pavillons showcasing the contribution of social and economic participants, in addition to civil society and political institutions, which are all taking part in the campaign to promote Bahrain and project its diversity and landmark achievements. Hundreds of people visited the exhibition to learn about Bahrain's culture, diverse society and long-standing religious tolerance, as well as business opportunities. More than 200 delegates representing Bahraini organizations, including community figures, NGOs, religious leaders, and members of the expatriate community, are taking part in the exhibition and conference in the US. Mosques, churches, temples, schools, clubs, societies, and associations are all represented at the event, which will cater to an invited audience of residents, diplomats, parliamentarians, business organizations, students, religious leaders, and local and international media. Representatives of all components of the Bahraini society were present with a clear message to convey that Bahrain, though small in size, is big with its various components and religions. The message is consistent in showing how the pillars of mutual respect among all components of society are the dividends of the Royal Reform Project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. And I've visited much, many of the uh, different exhibitions here, the sports exhibition, but this I find more fascinating because of the um, the innovation that goes into building mm -hmm. these little small islands off mm -hmm. the off mm -hmm. the um, reclaimed lands from mm -hmm. the sea in Bahrain, and I see that there's going to be a great possibility for the country. Mm -hmm. um, it's very open society. Women are very um, prominent in society, mm -hmm. and it's fascinating to me. I'm delighted to be here at the exhibition, and it's a wonderful demonstration of imagination and vision, which I see on every side as I walked around the exhibition. It's such wonderful people there representing and presenting Bahrain mm -hmm. in a way which I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I met many people here that I knew because I lived in Bahrain from 1956 until 1996. Mm -hmm. And I was the chief executive of the Bahrain Petroleum Company. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a delight to be here and to meet you and all the members of the staff. I'm enjoying being here at This Is Bahrain and learn a tremendous amount both about uh, real estate and these great housing projects that you're doing and this phenomenal project I just learned about, but also about everything that you're doing with education, which happens to be my field. And I've spoken with the Ministry of Education and also the uh, British School, et cetera. And you're just doing some really tremendous and innovative things. And I'm looking forward to hopefully working with them in some way and doing my part 
to uh, bridge the gap between the two countries. I'm familiar with Bahrain because um, I'm the Vice President of the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and I have my own business as well which is a travel agency but I've been involved with the Bahrain mission in New York for quite a while. As a matter of fact with the previous Consul General we did a whole program on Bahrain mm -hmm. uh, which was very well received, it was very well attended and I'm glad to see because this is really the first time that I've seen you focus um, on all the areas that are per pertinent to Bahrain. So I think the more you do, the more you'll get. Because a lot of people, they hear it, they know it, but they don't really know exactly what mm -hmm. all of the things that you offer. And, and, um, and the reciprocity with the United States, mm -hmm. which I think is very important because there's always been a friendly relationship with the United States. Mm -hmm. So I think the more of these events that you do, you attract more people and I think you be, you like the projects of the growth. Um, it's important to know that it's growing. Uh, this is Bahrain delegation paid a visit to the Islamic Cultural Center of New York where they met with officials at the center. The delegation was briefed about the services and facilities of the center, which included a mosque, library, school and a large multipurpose hall. During the visit, the delegation signed memorandum of understanding to promote peace, tolerance and coexistence and to conduct exchanges of delegates, share experiences and hold meetings. The Islamic Cultural Center is a mosque and Islamic Cultural Center in the borough of Manhattan. A multi-faith prayer for peace by religious leaders from Bahrain and the U.S. was held at the St. Stanislaus Kostka Roman Catholic Church in New York yesterday. Leading the prayer were St. Christopher's Cathedral Dean, Revered Christopher Butt, Egyptian Orthodox Church priest Rawes George, Dialogue Table of Religions and Cultures Chairman and Bahraini clergyman Sheikh Salah al Joda, Hindu Temple Head Shastri Vijay Kumar Balkrishna Mukhya and ISKCON Bahrain representative Sridhar Krishna. Several clergymen, community leaders and diplomats also took part in the prayer, calling for solidarity among religions and denounced the surge in terrorism that has bit part of the world. Very good evening, you're watching the business news on Bahrain Television. Last night, Bahrain played host to a prestigious hour ceremony honoring global leaders in Islamic finance. More details in this report from Daniel Duporto. Leading figures in Islamic finance from both the public and private sectors traveled from around the world to participate in the fifth annual Global Islamic Finance Awards, GIFA, organized by UK-based Edbiz Consulting and held at Bahrain's Gough Hotel Convention Center. We have chosen Bahrain uh, for the award ceremony because of the central role Bahrain has played in the development of Islamic banking and finance, not only in Bahrain, but in other countries of the world as well. Uh, the recipients this year come from uh, 20 countries. There are 40 categories and uh, uh, 30 institutions from all over the world are participating in this year's award ceremony. 
Prominent attendees included His Royal Highness Mohamedou Sanusi II, Emir of Khandum, Nigeria, Professor Hamey Ondar, Chairman of GIFA, Malaysian Ambassador to the Kingdom, His Excellency Dato Ahmed Shahizan Abid Samad, UK Ambassador to Bahrain, His Excellency Simon Martin, CMG, and Pakistan's Ambassador, His Excellency Mohammed Saeed Khan, alongside myriad other prominent executives and experts. The Kingdom of Bahrain has been a centre of Islamic finance for a number of years now. Uh, I'm the newly arrived British ambassador uh, and one of my uh, tasks uh, is to help build the links that exist between Bahrain as a, a regional centre for Islamic finance and London uh, which sees itself uh, as a global centre for Islamic finance and so there are many British financial institutions who are really interested in, uh, in developing links with, uh, uh, with Bahrain in Islamic finance and we're looking to encourage Bahraini uh, banks and other financial institutions uh, to do more in London as well. This year's event, honouring individuals and institutions from around the region and beyond, has also provided participants with invaluable networking opportunities. Next year, GIFA will move to Astana in Kazakhstan, followed by Jakarta, Indonesia the following year. With the hosting of the Global Islamic Finance Awards here in Bahrain, our status as a hub of global Islamic finance is cemented. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporta. The Bahrain Technology Company Society held a meeting today with the Economic Development Board where they reviewed horizons of promoting bilateral cooperation to continue developing the information and communication technology sector in Bahrain. BTEC members were briefed by the EDB representatives on the board's vision for the development of the sector and its plans and programs in order to attract more foreign investment to work in the Bahraini market and to make Bahrain their headquarters to work in the neighboring markets and BTEC gave a presentation on its activities, vision, mission and its goals, which are mainly about enhancing the ICT sector's contribution to the national economy. The Bahrain Offshore Index closed today at 1,275.01 points, a decrease of 2.63 points below last closing. The fall was in the commercial banks, investment, services, industrial, hotels and tourism sectors. And investors traded mainly in the commercial banks, representing 67% of the total value of shares traded. 44 transactions took place with a volume of 4,908,270 shares, worth the value of 461,209 Bahraini dinars.